Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of February, 2025. Since the last time uh, you have seen me here in the shop, um, you haven't missed anything. The only thing that I did was I drilled out one rivet on the aileron push tube so that it would be ready for the Cherry Max rivets when they arrive. And what I've been doing uh, with respect to building an airplane for the last week and a half is waiting for parts to arrive. The, I presume in this long tube would be the, the piano hinge and the, the flap spar that I need. But I also looked at the invoice and found out that um, it doesn't have the aileron bracket, that, that thick piece of aluminum that I need. When I ordered this stuff, I couldn't just select it, make a selection and put it in my cart and pay for it. It says call to order. So I had to speak to somebody there. And when I ordered an FL706B, a flap 706B part, what was typed in was an F706B. So instead of sending me the, uh, the flap bracket that I need to complete that flap, um, I've got a fuselage bulkhead that needs to be returned. So I reordered the correct piece that should have come in the first place. It's been a week since I ordered that and the Cherry Max rivets that I need because they have been, the Cherry Max rivets have been on back order for over a month now with aircraft spruce. And for a week, there's been no movement on my order. It just says shipment pending or preparing shipment. So I spent about 20 minutes uh, on hold with fans today and wasn't able to get through. And when I'm done recording this intro, I'll try that again so we can get moving. Um, here in the shop today, oh, you can also see I've got some West System stuff over here. So getting ready to start do, doing fiberglass stuff. But it is really cold here in the Gilbertson Aero Factory. It's 26 degrees out there and it's like maybe 40 here in the garage. So I might do a little bit of unboxing and then find a project that I can do inside. Anyways, that's probably enough about my... Um, complaining about things that are beyond my control. There's no point in doing that. So let's build an airplane. Well, friends, it has been a while since I have put out a video, obviously, and uh, I'm still here. Uh, but it has been going slowly for a number of reasons. The work that occurs here in this video isn't that interesting necessarily. So we'll be able to talk about all of that other stuff. Um, obviously unboxing here, really disappointing that we ended up with this um, fuselage bulkhead thing. And I think that's the thing that's to the left um, laying on the table, still wrapped in the paper. It's not even for this aircraft. So that led to a long delay and um, yeah, I'm not even going to get into it other than to say that um, I think that well, not necessarily quality control, but customer service is um, kind of taking a hit. Uh, presently over there with our good friends at Vans. I'm sure that will get back on track, but it's been a frustrating few weeks. Um, so what I decided to do on this day was to get into the fly LEDs or the fly LEDs or however you want to pronounce it. And so you'll get to just see me reading instructions and uh, doing a little bit of inventory business here. And, and ultimately what I realized, um, g going through it is that I need to actually cut, um, into the wingtips, um, before I do any sort of soldering LEDs onto these boards or anything like that. And I foolishly thought that that wasn't necessarily a thing that would have to happen right away because, um, following my buddy Tim and having seen him do his, I, I don't recall him doing that, but then uh, we have different, we both bought our kits through fly LEDs, but we have different kits. And if you look, um, uh, well, anyways, um, these two boards, um, one of the, one of the boards has like a two and a half uh, inch extension that, yeah, you need to cut a hole to get it to even fit in the first place. So uh, we'll get into that here in a minute. So what's been going on with me? Why have I been gone for so long? And why am I um, 
giving you a video that ultimately will take place over a period of probably three weeks and four different work sessions. Well, um, I, I'm not sure if I said it here or not, but I made a decision at the end of last year to leave the film and television industry. Um, I'm getting older and being away from home for two thirds of every year. I don't have many years left to get stuff done. And so I would prefer to um, be closer to home and closer to family and be able to, um, you know, live my life for all of the year and not just a third of it. Therefore, um, I have been working diligently to grow my other business, which if I haven't mentioned it, I think I probably have, but I, four years ago, I started a bookkeeping company and I capped the size to make it manageable enough that I could handle it when I was away working, I work remotely. And, um, so this year what I'm doing is, um, working very hard to, to grow that because that is now my, my primary. And so that's why I have not spent a lot of time in the shop other than waiting on parts and waiting on parts again, waiting on parts again, waiting on parts again, getting assurances that this thing is arriving on Tuesday and it doesn't arrive until Wednesday of the following week. Um, yeah, that's been a bit of frustration, but to be honest, um, my life when I'm home is much less, much different than it was before where I just, when I'm home, I'm not working. I'm just have all the time in the world world to work on the airplane. Instead, I'm working on, uh, growing Gilbertson bookkeeping LLC. It's a very cleverly named company. Um, yeah, so I've been, uh, working on that, uh, quite a bit. And I'll continue to kind of apply myself at that tempo until um, until it's at a point that I feel comfortable um, that it's going to be able to, um, you know, provide for me and my family the way that I want. Um, but a lot of work on the front end. Um, in terms of working on the airplane and making videos and whatnot, because I am having far fewer opportunities to do long three, four, five, six, seven, eight hour work sessions. Um, and I'm, I'm grabbing, you know, an hour, a half hour here and there, um, posting a video for every work session no longer makes sense because, um, I would, I would spend two or three times as long editing a video than I did actually, uh, working. So, um, I'm going to revert back to a little bit of what I did at the very beginning of this channel, which is maybe have a few work sessions lumped together. Um, and I think I'll probably get on a schedule of, uh, for now of weekly videos, um, encompassing a broader, um, <laughs> I was going to say a broader, um, amount of work. And I laugh because I'm like, I'm hoping it is, but as we all know, uh, most of the rest of my life is going to be about building that left flap. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, I have received the spar. You saw that in the beginning. I received that. Um, I forget what they call it, but basically that part of the bracket assembly, that thick piece of aluminum, I received the replacement. Um, I received all the replacement parts for the flap so I can get to work on that. Um, and in the interim, I was working on torque tubes, um, and you saw some of that. And what I, uh, there will be a clip coming up here in this video of me, and it doesn't go for very long. I got the Cherry Max rivets that I needed to finish the second, um, not torque tube, but the aileron push tube, push rod, and um, it didn't go well. It didn't go well. If we think back to uh, one of my more recent videos, I did a little snippet in there explaining how in the aft spar of the, it's got to be the right wing, um, and maybe a spot in mid spar of the um, mid span of the aft spar of the left wing. Anyways, that I was going to use Cherry Max rivets in there. And so I was waiting for those to show up. And when I did that, and I was demonstrating dropping a Cherry Max rivet into one of the holes, uh, one of you guys left a comment saying, hey, that that shouldn't go in that hole so easily. 
I said, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going to drill that up and use a larger rivet. That was just for demonstration purposes. Well, here's what I learned with these torque tubes. Um, this one that I had to drill these really, really, really long rivets out of, the holes um, got just ever so slightly widened out, but they did get widened out a little bit. Um, and he was absolutely right. For the Cherry Max rivets to set properly, it does need to be a pretty snug fit. And so I got the the, the long dash eight, in this case, um, Cherry Max rivets to finish up the second aileron push tube. And um, it was a, a waste of time, waste of money, waste of really good Cherry Max rivets. Um, because they won't set properly because those holes were a little bit widened out. And that being said, as we've talked about before, there's no tolerance to go bigger with those holes. You're working with so little material in terms of the width of the material there that you can't, you can't upsize those holes. Okay. So I ended up needing to replace all of the parts for that aileron push tube, um, meaning both of the threaded rod ends, the chromoly tubing, um, and then of course more Cherry Max rivets. So um, those have been ordered, and as has been the case lately, when they will show up is a mystery. Doesn't matter what the tracking says, it only matters when they actually arrive. So I'm remaking that one. Um, but that's what that little um, bit of business was all about. Um, and as I'm editing this, a little bit of trouble with the um, editing software or just the fact that my computer is getting old. So I'm just looking at a still frame and sort of guessing uh, by my cuts here what's, what, what you're actually seeing on the screen as I do this voiceover. Um, let's, let's take a check here. Okay, I'm back. You didn't even know that I left, but anyways, I'm back. Um, and I see that one of the things I missed here was the whole cutting of the wing tips thing. Don't worry, we're gonna come back to that because that is something that there's more work to do on that. But yeah, we're definitely in struggle bus with the, um, oh boy, that was just a really disappointing session. Here's what ended up happening. I got so frustrated with this that I just decided to turn off the camera and scratch my head a little bit. And so I actually did some other work because I did get an order of several different sizes of Cherry Max rivets. And I did go ahead and go to work on the the stuff that I was talking about on the aft, the indoor, inboard portion of the aft spar, the flap brace. Um, there were a few Cherry Max 3 um, in there, including upsizing the holes that I talked about to make those a drill them out to a number 20. Those all went in brilliantly and coming up here in a second, I'll show you a photo of that. And also, um, if you recall, because I did something out of sequence, I ended up having to remove one of the aileron, the inboard aileron bracket, um, that has to be rebuilt. And so those parts are coming in the next, uh, little shipment of stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, here you can see the one, two, three Cherry Max rivets that I put uh, there. And so that all went swimmingly. Thank goodness. I need a win. Um, <laughs> uh, so what are we getting into here? Okay, so coming back to present day, um, which is the 8th of March. So it really has been a good amount of time. Those um, printed circuit boards for the Fly LEDs, they need to be shaped, I guess. They need to be fitted to the uh, where they are going to live in the wingtips. And um, as you saw earlier, I had to um, lay down a template, line it out, and make some cuts there. And um, I didn't go back into the shaping of them because I was busy doing other stuff and that all that sanding and cutting and whatever with fiberglass is pretty messy but i came back to it today and got them all um fitted up it is a little unnerving um to take i think that for all four of those boards it was on average um about an eighth of an inch around the rounded the curved edges none of the flat edges and um I think that when we get to the end here, I'll show you a little vertical video of how I had to sort of 
adjust um, adjust one of the cuts that I made to accommodate the the board the right way. So this is a little it's it's kind of interesting for me. Um, it's a project that I'm looking forward to to putting these together in more than 30 years ago um, in the Marine Corps. Uh, I made my living uh, doing this kind of stuff, but I haven't done it since then. So um, I it will be kind of relearning um, soldering and all that stuff all over again. Um, but the amount of work involved in getting these um, these boards formed and fitted um, to the wingtip before I go into soldering. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that they're damaged in any way, but, um, yeah, I did a fair bit of work on them. Uh, so I'm anxious to get into, um, actually putting them together. So here's what's next on my building agenda. Um, get these, um, fly LEDs just soldered together, put together in, in whatever manner they, they need to be, be, need to be, and then put them on the shelf. Um, finish up the left flap, although I don't know if that's going to be the very next thing I do because I still do have those fuel tank leaks that I need to address. And I bought a, at the time, a fresh batch of Pro Seal because my old Pro Seal had long since expired. And if I wait too long, too much longer, this Pro Seal will expire too. So I think that, <laughs> I think that before. Before I get into finishing up that left flap, I'll put those parts on the shelf and just go fix those leaks leaks in the tank. And then uh, we can all resume our lives, um, get on with it. Saw Tim today. Um, he's back in town and we had our EAA, EAA chapter meeting. So we had a good talk about what's going on with his wingtips and the, uh, the piano hinge mod. So I learned a lot more about that. It's something that I plan to do as well. Um, so let's see, we're coming up to the end here. Um, as a reminder, probably going to be on a weekly schedule for the time being until I have more free time uh, throughout the week. Um, but yeah, you'll get a look here at the um, the modification that I did. So these are pretty well shaped to fit. And now you can see where I had to make a little extra notch there to get it to go exactly where it needs to be. There'll be a lot more work done on these things before it's all done, but um, that's probably good for now. So we'll move on to the next thing. Thanks for being here.